So in my previous video, I mentioned that in September of 2023, my drone was no longer legal to fly here in the United States. But before I explain that, let's do a brief review on drones so that you can have a background and therefore a better understanding of the story. A drone is a colloquial term for an unmanned vehicle. It could be an aircraft, a boat, or even a ground vehicle. As you saw in the previous pictures, most drones had a military application and they are not always miniaturized. Sometimes they are regular size. Within the last decade or so, there has been a massive increase in the use of non-military drones, and this passenger bus being developed in Australia is a perfect example. Basically, drones can be operated remotely via some type of controller, and some actions can even be automated. For the purpose of this discussion, though, we're going to focus on unmanned aerial vehicles, also called a remotely piloted aerial vehicle in many countries. To be more specific, we're going to talk about small unmanned aerial vehicles. Radio controlled airplanes and helicopters have been around for decades, and these are primarily flown at designated airfields. However, in the early 90s, quadcopters were being produced in Japan. It wasn't until 1999, though, that they started to produce lightweight quadcopters with cameras in significant quantities. As the technology improved, so did the unmanned aerial vehicles. In the United States, a small unmanned aerial vehicle is defined as weighing less than 55 pounds, and anything 55 pounds and over is simply referred to as an unmanned aerial vehicle. From this point onward in the video, I will be referring exclusively to a small unmanned aerial vehicle, even when I use the term drone. So on January 7, 2013, a Chinese company known as DJI released the Phantom 1, a quadcopter drone that you could attach a GoPro camera to for amateur photography and filmmaking. The next version of the Phantom known as the FC-40 had a built-in camera, and as the years rolled by, each newer version of the Phantom came with additional features. The last version of the Phantom is known as the Phantom 4 Pro and is available in various iterations, depending on the use. As drones increased in popularity, the Federal Aviation Administration started to implement changes in the aviation regulations regarding the use of drones in the United States of America's airspace. One of those regulations became effective in 2015 and required that any drone weighing more than 250 grams be registered and that the registration be clearly marked on the drone. That registration requirement was later struck down in the U.S. Court of Appeals, but it was later enshrined into U.S. law by then-President Donald Trump in 2017. Also, drone operators are required to carry proof of such registration on their purse when flying the drone and be willing to show it to law enforcement or FAA field agents if asked to do so. The next significant regulation is known as Remote ID, and after several delays, Remote ID was eventually implemented on September 16, 2023. This regulation was what grounded my drone for three months. You see, my drone is a Mavic 2 Pro, which was launched by DJI in 2018, and the Mavic 2 Pro did not have the ability to transmit a Remote ID. The Mavic 2 Pro has always transmitted its serial number, and with special equipment from DJI, you can read that transmission and even know where the person controlling the drone is standing. However, the serial number did not meet the digit requirements for remote ID, so changes needed to be implemented for the Mavic 2 Pro to become compliant. But what is a remote ID? So basically, the FAA requires that any drone that needs to be registered must transmit a remote ID wirelessly from takeoff to shutdown, as well as the information listed here. In late November of 2023, DJI released a firmware update that would allow the Mavic 2 series of drones to transmit a remote ID. So let me show you how I got my drone compliant. After installing the firmware update using the DJI app on my tablet, I then logged into my account on the FAA's website. Here you can see the registration for my first Mavic 2 Pro which had crashed. I did have insurance, so I had to send it in for repairs, but the insurance company wrote it off and sent me a check for replacing it. I don't know what they did with the shell or the hull of the drone since it was damaged by seawater and had no mechanical failures. So for my own protection, I changed the registration to damaged and cancelled. So how does that protect me? Let's assume for argument's sake that someone were to get a hold of that shell and rebuild the drone with new internal parts. Let's also assume that they use a rebuilt drone to do something illegal. If authorities were to intercept that drone and confiscate it, after looking up the serial number with the FAA, the serial number would appear under my account. But because it's listed as damaged and cancelled, authorities would know right away that it was a rebuild, and so I would not have any FBI agents knocking on my door. 
Now, after receiving the check from the insurance company, I got myself another Mavic 2 Pro, even though the Mavic 3 was available. You're probably asking why, especially since the Mavic 3 comes with remote ID already enabled, as well as a better camera and a battery that lasts twice as long as the battery in the Mavic 2 Pro. I'm going to answer that question, but first, let's look at how I registered my Mavic 2 Pro. This is a screenshot of the DJI app on my tablet, and although my tablet is configured to display in Spanish, I'll let you know what the equivalent is in English. The blue rectangles have been added to block out personal information. So to get your remote ID, just click on these three dots up here. It will then take you to a page that says General or General Configuration. After that, click this line at the bottom that says About, and that will take you to the next page. The second line from the bottom is where it says Remote ID Serial Number, and that is what you enter under your registration. So here you can see the two drones registered to my account. The one that's active is the one I'm currently using. Inside the drone there is a sticker with a serial number. And basically what DJI has done is that they've added some digits in front of the serial number to create a remote ID serial number. In other words, the remote ID for your DJI drone also includes the serial number of the drone. Now as you can see up here, I can also choose a device type. So what does that mean? So basically, not all drones can become Remote ID compliant with just a firmware update. Those drones would instead need a Remote ID module that has to be physically attached to the drone. Some modules can be plugged into the circuit board inside the drone, while others may need to be mounted on the outside of the aircraft. Make sure you do your research and figure out which module is best for you, and the easiest way to do that is by contacting the manufacturer or doing a search online. But let's go back to our Remote ID functionality diagram. The problem that most of us have with remote ID is that a 13-year-old child can register a drone, which means that when they fly, their location will be broadcasted for the world to see. This is potentially very dangerous. Even if the person flying the drone is an adult, what if someone mistakenly believes that the drone is spying on them, even if it's not? Being able to locate the pilot could potentially put the pilot at risk of a physical attack. Also. What if the pilot is doing legitimate work such as a bridge or power line inspection in an isolated area? Being able to pinpoint the pilot's location could put him or her at risk of being mugged and their equipment stolen, not to mention potential injury or loss of life. So this holiday season, if you plan to give a drone as a gift, bear in mind that if it weighs more than 250 grams, it will need to be registered and be remote ID compliant. Another thing that a recreational drone flyer in the United States will need to do is to pass a basic knowledge test known as TRUST. The purpose of this test is to make sure that the recreational user is aware of the basic measures for safe and legal operation of a drone in U.S. airspace. If you plan to fly your drone to make money or to support a business, that requires another type of certification called a Part 107. I'll provide a link below with information on how to get Part 107 certified. This is something that should be taken seriously, because if you use an unmanned aerial vehicle to support a business, even if no money is exchanged, the pilot in command is required to have a Part 107 certification, and a failure to do so can result in heavy fines. Now I know I've said a lot in this video, and for the sake of simplicity, I've skipped certain things that were not 100% necessary to make my point. However, I have put links to everything in the description below so that you can do additional research. The last issue I wanted to clarify has to do with why I purchased another Mavic 2 Pro instead of the newer Mavic 3. So the Mavic 2 Pro is a very capable drone with a lot of features. One of the features that I really like is the ability to create pre-programmed waypoints for a flight. When the Mavic 3 was initially released, it did not have this feature as well as some of the other features that I was used to on the Mavic 2 Pro. In addition, I already had batteries, a carry case, filters, and other accessories for the Mavic 2 Pro so it made sense to stay with the Mavic 2 Pro. Since I made that decision, DJI has released several versions of the Mavic 3, including firmware releases that now make waypoint programming possible. There is no doubt that DJI is a trendsetter in the drone industry. However, one thing I really hate about DJI drones is geofencing. So what is geofencing? There are certain places where drones are usually not allowed to fly, but they can if the pilot receives permission from the FAA. But even after getting permission from the FAA, the DJI software will use geofencing to block the drone from taking off or entering that airspace. As a result, you now have to contact DJI and get an unlock code for that airspace. Unfortunately, the automated unlock system doesn't always work depending on which tablet you're using, and if you're in an area with no internet connection, then it's practically impossible. For this reason, 
I'm looking at another drone manufacturer to purchase my next drone. And that drone manufacturer is Autel. I provided links below to some of their drones. So until next time, safe flying.